Hi, gang. I was asked to come up with a simple and cheap way to make pinhole cameras for teaching kids how to make them and how they work. So I came up with a way of doing it using a single poster board. And of course I figured I'd pass that on to you. So here's how to make a pinhole camera out of poster board. It all starts with a sheet of poster board. You can get them in art stores, school and art supply sections in most stores like Walmart, and discount stores or dollar stores. The darker the color and the duller the surface the better. That's to have as little light as possible reflecting around inside the camera. Black would be best. Here are all the dimensions. The solid lines are where you'll cut, and the dashed lines are where you'll fold. Use the dimensions to draw that onto the poster board. If your poster board is 28 inch by 21 and 7 8 inch, then they should fit perfectly. But this one isn't. I quickly find out that it's a quarter inch short. Sure enough, measuring with a measuring tape shows that. And so does comparing it with another poster board. I draw the lines anyway. What it means is that this last square is a little short, but more on that later. I continue drawing. There are three more details we can add to finish it off. Firstly, draw a small circle in the middle of this square. That's the hole which the light will enter into, the camera's aperture. Don't worry if it's too big. You can cover it up with cardboard from the outside to make smaller holes in later, as I'll show you. I make it around a quarter inch or six millimeters in diameter. Then, on the next square over, I draw three lines near the fold. They're for the viewing hole, or viewfinder to use camera terminology. I make it with roughly these dimensions. And lastly, I prepare a piece of white paper. That's the screen inside where you'll see the image appear on. Basically, I make the dimensions whatever half of the length of this paper is. And such that it fits inside this square with enough room for taping. I did that because I needed lots of them for the kids to use. And that was an efficient use of the paper. I cut it out. And tape it in the middle of this square. I also cut out the circle I'd drawn for the aperture. And I cut out the viewfinder. We're now ready to cut it from the poster board. Remember to cut only the solid lines. Alternatively, I'm trying something new. For anyone who's a teacher or giving a workshop where you'll be making many pinhole cameras, I've come up with this paper template which you can print out. But to help support this channel, I started an online store where you can buy the template for download for a low price. You'll simply download it, print out the pages, and cut, and tape them all together. Then use the template to trace onto as many poster boards as you want. There's a link in the video description that'll take you somewhere that has all the details. Once you've cut it out, it's time to fold it into the shape of a box. Start by folding up along all the dashed lines. Fold the pieces all the way back against each other. More is better. Press the edges with your fingers. Make sure the folds at the corners of the tabs meet to minimize any gaping holes in the corners where light can leak in. To tape it together, I find it works best if I start with these two edges. Remember, this is the square that was one quarter inch too short, so I pull it back around a quarter inch. Line them up well before taping, though you can easily remove the tape and move things around at any time later. To get nice wide tape, I cut strips from packing tape, but normal narrower tape works too. Do all three tabs for one side before moving on to the other side. For the other side, it'll be trickier to press the tape on well because you won't be able to get your hand inside to press against. In that case, put the tape on the tab first, then bring the tape to the other side and apply gentle pressure. That works much better than pressing hard. Your poster board pinhole camera is done. Time to test it. Point the side with a hole or aperture in it at your scene. In this case, some houses with the sun shining on them. Look in the viewfinder at the white paper screen inside. It doesn't show up well on camera since too much light gets in the viewfinder. So I made this special viewfinder just for the camera. This is what I normally see. It works indoors too when you point it at a window. You can also point it at lights. This is a compact fluorescent light. Note that your poster board may let in too much light through the cardboard itself, lighting up the box inside and making it hard to see the image. I didn't have that problem with black poster board, but it's a problem with other colors. A quick fix is to put a towel over it. Another approach is to add an extra layer all around, like with this duct tape. But if you're making 50 of these like I had to for the kids, then duct tape can get expensive. 
best to just go with black. You can make the focus adjustable by cutting a small notch in a piece of cardboard and slowly sliding it over the hole. As you do, the image will become more focused, but it will also become darker. If you're going to look at the sun, then cut out a small piece of thin material, like kitchen aluminum foil, and poke a tiny hole in it using a pin. That's why it's called a pinhole camera. Make sure the pinhole is lined up with the bigger hole behind it, and tape it onto the camera. Here's what the sun looks like in real life. And here's what it looks like using the pinhole camera with a pinhole. Never look at the sun directly. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more how-to videos like this. You can support these videos either through Patreon or through a one-time donation. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon.